It's Jesus Christ. He's the one that deserves all the glory and all the praise. It's our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that took the nails. He's the one that took the whips. He's the one that had a crown of thorns pressed down into his skull. The one who had his flesh ripped from his back. And yet so little attention is given to Christ. So much of our lives are spent thinking about the things of this world. Thinking about our team, thinking about entertainment, thinking about the money that we're making, thinking, thinking about how rich we're going to get. And so little attention is given to Christ and what he did on that cross 2,000 years ago. When he hung between the heaven and earth and he made an atonement for the souls of men. And yet so little of our attention is given to Jesus Christ. So little thought is even given to Christ. People give thought to everything else. And God is not in any of their thoughts. Tonight I want you to look to Jesus Christ. I want you to think about Jesus. I want you to think about him enduring the cross, despising the shame tonight. I want you to think about Jesus tonight. I want you to think about the Savior of the world tonight. The Lord Jesus Christ. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Who only has immortality. Dwelling in the light that none can approach. The Bible says in him was life. And the life was the light of man. And the light shined in the darkness. It's Jesus that's the light of the world. He that follows after him will not walk in darkness, but you'll have the light of life. I want you to consider the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Let me tell you something right now. Praying on a carpet five times a day will not get you one foot closer to God. Praying on a rollout carpet towards Mecca is not going to get you an inch closer to the Lord. Not one inch. The only way you are going to get closer to God is through the door. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enters, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. If you don't come through that door, you're not going to be saved. You come through the door. Or you don't come at all. You come to Jesus through the door. You come to the Father through Jesus who is the door. Or you don't come into God's presence and you don't have a relationship with God. The Bible says he that has the Son has the Father. If you do not have the Son, you do not have the Father. You do not have the Father. You don't know the Father. Without the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said he is coming back. He said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Jesus is coming back and he has a reward. He's going to give to every man according to his works. Yet many walk on by like it means nothing. Like their salvation means nothing. Keep your kids away from us. Yeah, the kids, right. Jesus said, let the little kids come to me. You love little kids, buddy. No, I do not. Unless you're right, I do love children. I do love children. You're absolutely right about that. We should all love children. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. People say, people, people are abusing their children by not teaching them about Jesus Christ. That is child abuse. When you keep your child from knowing Jesus Christ, you are abusing your child. That's a fact. You are keeping the truth that is going to save their souls from them. That is abuse. That is absolute abuse. 
Anyone that keeps the truth of Jesus Christ from their child is denying and depriving of them of the life, eternal life and salvation and understanding the truth that will set them free. Jesus said, know the truth and the truth will what? Make you free. Know the truth. It's the truth that makes you free. So you know, right now we're celebrating this wicked abomination called Pride Month. Pride is an abomination to the Lord. It is a sin in the sight of the Lord God. God wiped out the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, two homosexual cities. Evil in the sight of God. And God is coming back to judge this world. He's going to judge all that are proud, all that do wickedly. The Bible says they're going to be a stubble. I said they're going to be a stubble. And we're not here to harp on that tonight. But so many people are laying on these pride crosswalks and flying their pride flags. And what they're doing is they're poking the Lord in the eye with their sin. They're poking the Lord in the eye with their sin. And they don't realize that the judgment of God could be hours away, days away, maybe weeks away. We, we don't know how long. But we know you need to prepare to meet God. And going to a pride festival is not preparing yourself to meet God. I can tell you that. You're not prepared to meet God. Not celebrating that, you're not. That is an offense to our Lord. That is a heavy offense to our Lord. But I got news for you. The gospel of Jesus will set you free from that lifestyle. Amen? The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ will set you free from homosexuality and sexual immorality of all kinds. The gospel of Jesus will set you free. I believe it. No matter what it is. Whether it's adultery, whether it's fornication, whether it's drunkenness, whatever the sin is, I encourage you tonight to bring it to Jesus Christ. Lay it all down at the foot of the cross. Lay it all down at the foot of the cross. Because every last one of us has done enough sin to, li to land us in a thousand hells. We all deserve to go to hell. Every one of us deserves hell. But Jesus Christ laid down his life to set us free from the power of sin and death so that we do not have to go to hell. But we can be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. God's not willing that any should perish. God doesn't want any soul the night of this game to perish. Not a single soul. It's not God's will that any should perish. God desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That means all men. All. It says in 1 John chapter 2 that he died for the sins of the whole world. Not even for our sins, not just the sins of those that are saved. The Bible says he died for the sins of the whole world. Jesus. He died for everybody's sins. He took your sin and he took my sin and he went out on that cross and he died on that cross. And he became sin for us who knew no sin. That we might become the righteousness of God in Him. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of God, Jesus. He took every one of our sins. Every sin we ever did. You know, the, the night before I got saved, you know where I was? The topless bar. The night before I got saved, I was in a topless bar. Somebody invited me to church and I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ the next morning and I realized that I needed to repent and believe in the gospel. And I gave my life to Jesus Christ that next morning after being in that, that topless bar the night before, I came to Jesus Christ and I got saved. 
and I realized the error and that the sin that I was in was taking me away from God. That sin had separated me between me and God. My sin has hid, had hidden his face from me, yet God was drawing me by the power of the Holy Spirit. I could feel the call of the Holy Spirit. I realized my sin. I could feel the sin. I was convicted of my sin. And then I realized that the Holy Spirit's job is to convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. I realized that I was a sinner and that I was on my way to hell and that I needed to repent and believe the gospel. And I felt the voice of the Holy Spirit tell me that if I walk away from Him and if I just walk out into the world and reject the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to die and go to hell. I realized the error that I was in. I realized that I was on my way to hell. I realized that without Jesus, I was on my way to a crisis, eternity, eternal damnation. And Jesus said, how are you going to escape that damnation of hell? The Lord Jesus Christ and what he did at that cross. That's how you escape. What Jesus did at that cross 2,000 years ago when he loved you so much that he was willing to bleed and suffer and die so that you could be redeemed from all iniquity. Jesus Christ who gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Jesus Christ. And yet so many people walk away from the Lord. They don't give any thought to the Lord. The Lord is not on their thoughts. Meanwhile, God is on their mind. Or, they're on God's mind, I should say. God's thinking about their soul. God's thinking about their plight and where they're going to be spending eternity. See, when you were on the when he was on the cross, you were on his mind. I do believe that. When Jesus was hanging on that cross, bleeding, suffering, and dying for the sins of the world, he was thinking about you. He was thinking about my soul. He was thinking about the danger that humanity was in without him. Without his death, burial, and resurrection, we have no hope. Without the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are without hope in this world. We have no hope. We have no hope without our Lord Jesus Christ. What people need more than, more than a raise, more than a better job, more than more money, more than a relationship with somebody, more than sex, more than anything is they need a relationship with Jesus. That's what they need. They need it now. Reach out to Jesus tonight. Reach out to Jesus tonight. People are walking by saying, I don't need that. I don't need to be saved. People, I don't need to be saved. I don't need to read the Bible. I don't need to go into eternity with Jesus. Know what's going to happen to you on the day of judgment? God's going to say, depart from me. going to say, depart. I never knew you. You didn't want me. You didn't want me. Meanwhile, Jesus is reaching out his hand tonight. He's reaching out his, with his grace tonight. The grace. The mercy. His hand is stretched out in mercy. 
and in kindness. Meanwhile, we who have offended God in thought, word, and deed, enemies in our minds by wicked works, separated from God in, our, in, in sin, yet God is still reaching out his, with mercy. He's still reaching out with mercy. Even when we were dead in sins, the Bible says he hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. The Bible says by grace are you saved and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. That's why the Bible says that Abraham couldn't boast before God. God didn't know him anything. All Abraham did was believe God and the Bible says it was accounted unto him for righteousness and what did it say? Abraham was the friend of God. Tonight you can become the friend of God. If you will believe in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, you will become the friend of God. You know, there's a motto in the Marine Corps. It says there's no greater friend and no worse enemy than the Marines. No greater friend, no worse enemy. It's the way it is with God. There's no greater friend than God and there's no worse enemy than God. There's no greater friend than God and there's no worse enemy. And I'm telling you tonight, without the Lord Jesus Christ, you are the enemy of God. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not accepted the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are the enemy of God. You have no fellowship with Him. If you have not come to the Son, if you have not received the Son, if you have not believed in the Son, you are the enemy of God tonight. And you are not saved. And you will not enter the kingdom of God. You must come to Jesus Christ. You must repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus. Or you will not be saved. Tonight you have an opportunity. You have an opportunity tonight. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. He is calling out for you today to be saved. To receive the sacrifice that He has offered. The sacrifice of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. People aren't considering their soul. They don't consider it. They don't consider our Lord. They're more concerned about the score. Or getting some door prize. Or getting some bobblehead. Or getting some inflatable bat or something, then they all about their soul and where they're going to spend eternity. People are so concerned with the things of the world. But all that's going to matter on the day of judgment is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Everything is going to pale in comparison to that. Everything's going to pale in comparison to Christ. When you see the brightness of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you see the, the shining brightness of our Lord, whose eyes are like a flame of fire, and you stand before Him who took the print of the nails in His hands and His feet and the stripes on His back, and you see the wounded Lord, and you see the glorified Christ, the things of the world are going to grow strangely dim. Strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. The things of this world 
grow strangely dim. You know, recently I was over at the Gaza encampment, University of Washington. And there were there were Muslims. There were Muslims out there. And they were praying. They were praying to Allah five times a day. They were bowing down on their carpets and they were praying to Allah. And they were asking Allah to save them and all those different things that they were saying. But the problem is there's no salvation in Islam. There's no salvation in Muhammad. Muhammad didn't die for your sins. The Buddha, the Buddha didn't die for your sins. The Buddha wasn't nailed to the cross for your sins. The Buddha didn't do anything for your sins. He can't help you. It's Jesus that took the nails for you. Muhammad didn't do a thing for your soul. Muhammad was not crucified for you. Confucius was not crucified for you. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. He's the one that endured it all. He's the one that took the nails in his hands. Beaten and crucified for the sins of the world. And he's calling your name tonight with the Holy Spirit. He knows every hair in your head. He knows your name. He knows everything you've done today. And he's calling out to you today to be saved. Would you heed the call of our Lord tonight? Would you heed the call of our Lord Jesus Christ tonight and be saved? The Bible says in Acts 4 and 12, it's one of my favorite verses in the New Testament, it said there is salvation in no other. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the name that is above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. From Hitler to Mother Teresa, every last soul is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen? But for many, it'll be too late, like you said, brother. For many, it'll be too late. They'll confess his lordship, and then God will say, it is too late for you. Depart from me into the eternal fires, prepared for the devil and his angels. There is coming a day. Jesus said the time is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and those that hear shall live. We are preaching this gospel so that you might hear and live. So that you might have salvation in his name. That is the name. That is the name by which you can be saved. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord. That's right. Amen. So that's that's right. Jesus is Lord. Now, is he is he Lord? Cat, small L, small O, small R, or small D. Is he, is he just a Lord, or is he is he a Lord with all caps, capital L, all caps, kind of Lord? Yeah. That means he's a king. Do you bow down? He is taking the mantle of master, and he is my master. I serve him and only him. And if Jesus isn't your master, something else is. That's right. Fill in the blank. And and there's nothing else better to follow except for Jesus. You could follow after your drug addiction. You could follow after fill in the blank. Anything other than following the name of Jesus and the person of Jesus is a waste. It's an, an absolute and a waste. waste. I I I, I'm a big fan of, of sports. I love the Mariners. I love my I love my Seahawks. And I was a big fan of Sean Alexander back in the day. What a stud! 
what a man of God. But as much as I looked up to Sean Alexander, he didn't hold a candle to my king. The best man that ever walked this planet, bar none, is Jesus. He's my hero. There's nobody smarter. There's nobody stronger. There's nobody more willing. There's nobody, there's nobody greater, more perfect. There's nobody, more there's nobody There's nobody that can Holier. love better. There's nobody in any way, shape, or form that is better. Now, he's better than John Cena. John Cena's great, right. but sorry, still not better than Jesus. That's right. Our king! Because no other person could have done what he did. On the he cross. went to the cross. As king, he, he lessened his power. And instead of putting up a defense or calling the angels down to make right what was wrong, he went as a suffering servant. He did not open his mouth. He did not give a defense. And he went right. He went right to the cross and bled for me. He thought of my name as he hung on the cross. He thought of your name. If you're the only person to have ever walked the planet, Jesus would have still gone to the cross for you. His love is insurmountable. His love is unbelievable. His love is unattainable. It's, it, we can't even understand it. But it's true. He loves you. The God of creator of heaven and earth loves you. Jesus. And I know, I know this to be true because I felt his love. And I have suitcases full of sin. I'm not judging apart from what I know to be true. He says, find your own sin, pluck it out of your eyes, so then you can then therefore judge rightly. So we have to be careful when we're bringing judgment. But again, it isn't me that brings judgment. It's only the king. The only thing I want to bring you is Jesus. The only thing that can save is Jesus. Having a fair understanding of all of Scripture will not save you. He made it real simple. He said, for the wages of sin is death. So that's what we get paid in. At the end of our life, everyone's going to have to face that. Everyone will die. That's not something to be afraid of, especially if you know where you're going. And I know, without a shadow of a doubt, if I were to pass away tonight, I would be in the arms of my Savior. Not because I'm a great guy, because I'm not, I'm a sinner, but because I serve the best man that ever walked the planet. My favorite person to ever have lived is a Jew. Jesus, and I serve him and I love him. He is my king. There, there could be, but, 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 but sometimes, sometimes God heals you. I know. Well, he does. He, he, sometimes he heals you. I know he does. My brother was just talking about healing, and, and why, if I'm a believer, did, do, am I still missing my left arm? Why didn't God heal me? And so many times I could complain and, and kick against the Lord. Why didn't you heal me, God? Why didn't you heal my arm like you did the, the, the man in, in Luke chapter 6? You know, why can't, why can't my withered arm have been healed? Well, he doesn't always heal the way we want him to. He always answers prayer, but sometimes he answers no. And he's God. He gets to decide that, and I don't get to, I don't get to kick against that or buck against that, because where was I when he laid the foundations of the earth? That's right. Not here. Where was I when he spoke the stars into existence? Yeah. Not here. But before he did all that, he still had thoughts of me. Lowly, broken down, one-armed me. But why didn't he heal me? That's an honest question that the guy had. If you're such a follower of Jesus, why do you not have an arm? Just like when Israel, Jacob, wrestled with the Lord. He had a permanent hip injury for the rest of his life. And sometimes God has to take the ones he loves and discipline us and wake us up. Wake us up and, and we can flip our, flip our cursed finger up at God all we want. But really, if you're cursing me or flipping me off, it's not me you're angry at. It's him. And my battle isn't with you. The battle is, against flesh, is not against flesh and blood, but it's against spiritual things, spiritual issues. He is the one that can fight spiritual battles. I can't. But I know, 
my Savior lives. Because when you say that name, the demons squeal. If I were to stand up here and talk about any other issue, if I were to talk about any other issue, a drunk person wouldn't kick my speaker. But unfortunately, when you bring the truth of Christ out, sometimes people get a little angry, and that's okay. Because my God's big enough to handle your stupid anger. But God loves you. I want you to know that. Even if you shake your head at him and think you're so funny, you're really not because you're poking your finger in the eye of God. And he sees it. He sees it. And, and so you battle with the thing, Mr. Mr. Hangover, Hanager. Your issue is with your own sin. And every sin can be dealt with. Either you buck against it, and then God will be a respecter of persons. He will not force himself. In the, he will not force you to go to his heaven. He only wants people that want to be there. So if you reject it, <clears throat> really, he isn't sending you to hell. You have to reject his beautiful son's dead body and step over with the risen Savior to get there. And so, again, your battle is not with me. You can, you can tend me, you can cuss at me, but the your problem is with Jesus. Because he's the one that paid it. And why would you hate someone so much that loves you so much? When you were the most rebellious, when you were most angry at God, that's when he loved you the most. Amen. That's, wow. the, that's the truth of the gospel. It's nothing you did.